Tricopters and quadcopters have been around for a few years and each, each design has its own advantages and disadvantages. I think the main advantage of a quadcopter is simplicity of construction. It's, it's just a, an X uh, which is really easy and strong to build with a motor on each end of, of the forearms. So, you know, it doesn't get simpler than that. Tricopters are a little trickier to, us to build depending how you do it. But they're based, you know, we're talking basically the Y shape, uh, but one of the motors has to be on a pivot. So, you know, the Y shape is harder to build and the pivot is more complicated. So I think from, from a construction point of view, quadcopters definitely have the advantage. They just, you know, it just doesn't get simpler than that. Uh, and also, I guess an advantage that quadcopters have, it, I've started to, to see on the market a whole bunch of frames that you can use. And I haven't seen that for tricopters, which I, I was a little surprised about. But you know, the, you get you get a whole choice. You know, the inexpensive wood frames, or your carbon fiber, or all sorts of other different designs. You know, different sizes, of course. So, you know, building a, a quadcopter couldn't be easier. Uh, the the main disadvantage that a quadcopter has also is that you have you're talking four motors, and it's not just four motors, but it's also four speed controls. And a tricopter only needs three, and it, you know it, it can be a big difference if it's a, a big unit where the motors and speed controls are, are, is a big part of the total cost. A couple of years ago, I did my own design, and for that reason, I went with tricopter, just because to you know to keep the expenses down, um, because the tricopter only has three propellers, it can be quite a bit more efficient, because the you know, the, the size of the propeller makes a big difference in the overall efficiency. So if you have three generating the lift as opposed to four, the three are going to be bigger. And uh, the motors themselves are also going to be a little bit bigger. The speed control might also uh, be bigger. So overall, you know, all of the components can be more efficient on a tricopter. And if the, if the quadcopter is overall less efficient, you may end up using a bigger battery. So the whole the whole thing might be less efficient overall. So something to think about. Uh, I haven't run the numbers myself, but I, I can see if you have a, a you know a payload, which most of the time you do, it can make a big difference. You know, being able to have a propeller that's like one or two inches bigger in, in diameter, uh, because of course, uh, you know, the, with with a tricopter, you may have a less potential of interference with the blades. So that's another reason why you might be able to use bigger propellers and definitely that's going, to, that's going to be more efficient. So, you know, again, some food for thought there. As far as the control software, and this, this is one of the, uh, you know, tri quadcopter control units on the market. So, um, it, yeah, a, a tricopter is, is more complicated to control and a quadcopter is definitely simpler. But the truth is that it's all done through software. So nowadays, it, I don't think it makes any difference. It's, you know, just set a different dip switch depending on the configuration. So, you know, I don't think that makes any difference in, in practice nowadays. Um, with the quadcopter, you do have some redundancy. You have that extra motor, that extra blade, which in theory means that if you have a failure, you have some chance of being able to land safely. But in practice, I don't think that makes any difference. I, I, I don't know. I don't think any of, of the control units are sophisticated enough to to have an intel, intelligent fail safe where you they lower the power and just maintain it level and bring it down. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, of course, it, it, you might be flying over the tree or over water at the time. So in practice, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it, it will be much good. And I, and I know that. Um, I don't think any of them have any kind of intelligent failsafe like that. So bottom line is, I don't think a, a quadcopter is any any safer. You know, any uh, less you know, there's less risk involved. In fact, with a quadcopter, you can argue it's it's worse because there's more parts in there. It's an extra motor, an extra speed control. So there's more things that can fail. So so from the point of view of uh, you know being able to be reliable, I think actually a tricopter has the edge because there's fewer parts. You know, if something goes wrong with both of them, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, the, the biggest downside with the quadcopters is that you need a reverse rotation propeller. You, know, you can't just take a regular propeller and, and spin it around the, 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 the wrong way, the opposite way, because that just doesn't work. You, they actually have to be built with the blades on backwards. 
So, so that to me, it, you know, that's a big downside, especially if you're doing experimenting like I was, and you have an outsized motor and, and all of that, because there's very few reverse rotation propellers on the market. And, you know, to, to, to me, that, that was a big, big minus. Um, so, so the bottom line is that, you know, if you can find a reverse rotation a propeller that fits the motor that you have, uh, a quad captor is probably the better choice. You know, it's going to cost you a little more, but it's, it's probably going to be a lot easier to put together. But, but if you have an outside, odd sized motor or something unusual, a tri captor might be a lot easier to build because all of the components are really easy to find. If you're building something with stuff you already have, tri captor is probably going to be easier because you're probably going to have the motors and the propellers and you can build a tri captor pretty much any size. So, anyway, till next time.